How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 10. We're on the bye, sitting at 6-3. and three. Coming off of a massive win, huh? Against uh, Miami. Oh, man. That one, it still stuns me how well we did just uh, beating the Hurricanes, who are 2-5 and five now on the season. And, I mean, look, we held them scoreless through two quarters, only allowed 17 points, uh, no turnovers. I'm feeling really stoked about that. Hopefully we can continue that momentum this week as we have to go on the road to play Notre Dame. Uh, the odds of us doing well in this game are very, very low, but if we can win these back-to-back, -back, it's gonna be massive. We've got some recruiting to do this bye week, including a little bit of scouting. We still have a couple guys to look at. Uh, let's just go by overall here, see if any of these wide receivers are gonna be like maybe a massive pickup for us. We're not too far behind on a lot of them, and uh, who knows, maybe we, we have the opportunity to jump up and, and steal one of these guys. Paul Fowler, 76 overall, stays at 76, not the fastest guy, but 92 carrying is really nice. Uh, 79 route running, that's not bad. Definitely a, a balanced guy, could be a little bit quicker, but I don't mind it. We have three guys ready to visit this week, including our quarterback of the future. Hopefully, uh, that is. Let's see where the teams around us have already gone. The teams in front, at least, and we're only 770 behind. It's going to be a struggle to, to continue to stay in here, but uh, what does it say? Must stay within 1,500 points. So we're going to schedule our visit. It's a bye week one. Do we send it late? We're going to go week 14. We have a lot of buys coming up. I think Duke might be our only home game remaining at this point, or maybe one other, but we're going to be the last ones, and hopefully that extra 200 points off the visit helps quite a bit. With Matt Adams, we can send him to the Duke game. It's, you know, it's always important to get them to a game if possible. And Andrew Brown, this strong safety, can go to the Duke game as well. Now, I'm going to do what we normally do and just kind of go through and rearrange some points or take some points away. But we do need to take Todd Parks, this uh, defensive tackle off the board. I don't think he was crazy good. Uh, yeah, 68 overall at D-tackle, so that's not the end of the world. And some of these guys at the bottom were a long ways behind, but it's like, uh, I guess probably shouldn't have actually looked at Paul Fowler because we're losing 665 a week, so that's just not something that we can... Uh, claw back from but something like Paul Johnson is possible Mike Gallagher uh, is going to be a no-go he's one of the guys that we haven't scouted it I mean you know if we just can't get the points it's not worth it same with James Wilson this defensive end we're just going to have to cut him loose and that frees up some points so we might be able to scout some guys but uh, I'll finish this out I might fill the board back up again and then we'll go from there Okay, so we've removed five guys from the board total. We have two guys that I want to scout, and then we're actually going to... Uh, we will fill the board back up, but uh, we're going to offer scholarships this week. Anybody who's on the board, I think we still have a chance at getting. So we want to offer them scholarships to maybe uh, sway them in our favor, and we want to just use the points while we have them. Serge Mitchell, 74 overall athlete. Could be a, a potential quarterback. Seems relatively quick. He's a gem. Uh, of course, he is 79 overall. Not the best arm. He's got kind of low throw power, but his accuracy is actually pretty good. I'd say 86 accuracy is very solid. He's got 90 speed, 90 acceleration, so that's pretty impressive. And Paul Johnson, this defensive end, is 74 overall, which is also still good enough for us. So let's go to the no scholarships, and we're just going to start offering scholarships to guys. And uh, at this point, uh, we just want to use our points tempt them towards us hope for the best and then uh i think actually we can't even offer scholarships to everybody that we want to yet so give them to pretty much everybody and then next week we will finish that off and then uh, scout some more guys hopefully and uh, maybe move some more points around and there was one more thing i wanted to change we have three just standard quarterbacks not athletes on our board right now Max Mountain, the 66 overall. We're not giving him points, but we're in the lead. Mike Harris is the guy with 90 throw power, 84 accuracy, but he's super slow and he's 77 overall. We're 660 behind. Um, are we gaining? I think we're just, yeah, we're slowly losing to Texas State there. Um, and Nick Cox is the guy who's new and he's 73 overall. So a little bit worse. Uh, his throw power is three less. His accuracy is what, nine less. So he's a lot less accurate not you know his throwing power isn't too far off but he is way quicker 74 speed 75 acceleration i would rather have him than the pocket passer so we're going to take mike's points away and give them to nick 
and uh, just kind of hope that we can hitch our wagon behind uh, one of these new quarterbacks. Uh, here's something I didn't notice before we advance the week. Apparently, we leveled up. So we hit uh, level 12, which gives us uh, some extra points, and we're definitely going to go closer. It's tempting to go kitchen sink and get the second one because that could help us. Actually, you know what? Yeah, it's smart. We're going to go kitchen sink too. That will allow us to pour a few more points in the players that we really care about. Uh, and we'll start to do that next week. So we'll go ahead now and move on towards the Notre Dame game. We know that there's some big games being played within the top 25. Hopefully we see some uh, some upsets. And there we go. What we were hoping for, more so than the upsets, was a commit. We do get locked out by Jason Walker. Uh, Brian Terry's ready to visit. Andrew Brown goes to Oklahoma State. I was actually expecting that one. But the 80 overall center, Robert Gray commits. That is so massive. He's going to be uh, a strong point in our offensive line for a long time to come. So now we're into this week against Notre Dame. We're on the road. We have to go to, to South Bend, but they're four and four. So a couple of teams that are really good. They're an A team. They're going to be mid 90s overall, maybe high. This is going to be very, very difficult. Um, but let's let's not worry about that yet. I don't I don't need that extra stress. Let's do the rest of our recruiting for this week. So Jason Walker locked us out. We'll remove him. And Andrew Brown went to Oklahoma State as well. And we will go ahead and scout these guys. Now, at this stage where it's really hard for me not to just add skill players because there's such an abundance of them. But uh, let's go ahead and scout them. Before that, though, got to make sure that uh, the guys that we... We just added a couple, but the guys that we added last week... Just got to make sure that we're not scouting them for no reason just to take them off the board. But Gary Dunn will gain four or two overall up to a 74. That's a pretty solid looking running back and a maybe a potential pickup for us. Joe Frank, another running back, goes up to 74 as well. Uh, Very similar stats. Very similar. Joe's a lot stronger though. 71 strength versus 53 makes a big difference to me. Uh, similar break tackle, similar better trucking for Joe. He's definitely the better of the two. How about uh, Kingsley Lucas, the wide receiver? He goes down to a 66. Uh, good speed, bad acceleration. Not the best hands that we've ever seen. Um, I don't think I necessarily want him on the team, so I'm just going to remove him from the board before I accidentally offer him a scholarship this week. Uh, Colby Wright, 69 overall tackle. Goes down to a 65. That's a similar situation. Eric Rollins goes up to a 75 at defensive end. That's fantastic. Pretty quick guy. Um, 81 block shedding is really good. 71 There's 77 power moves. I like that as well. How about the two defensive tackles? Drew Perry is a bust who will go down to 62. So he's coming off the board. And Paul Moore at defensive tackle is another gem. 79 overall at defensive tackle is insane. I'm not sure how easily we'll be able to pick him up F at all. But that is a monster of a man. And now we'll offer a couple of scholarships. I got to make sure that I'm offering them to guys that uh, we can offer them to. Make sure that the... I think it's just Eric Rollins and Paul Moore, to be honest. Uh, not on our board for long enough yet. So we will uh, give them to Serge Mitchell, Paul Johnson, Gary Dunn, and Joe Frank. And now it does matter. Um, Paul Moore, he's 79 overall, but he is a, a Juco. I think he's a Juco junior. So it's like he's a good player. But he's not going to be around for a long time. And he's not going to develop anything spectacular. But I think it's useful to pick up guys like this. So we'll stop gap. So with our points this week, we'll, uh, I think, I mean, we got that extra kitchen sink. We can go up a little bit higher if we need to on a player. So I'm going to look and see what players we really want. And maybe take some players away or make take some points away from the players that we don't care as much about. And give them to some better players. All right, so I've gone through and given out the rest of our points. I kind of just went by uh, players that we wanted to have the most and bumped a couple of guys up to 16 or to 600 just to make sure uh, that we could pull them in. Michael May and Serge Mitchell, we have two athletes here on our board who uh, are, you know, we're within grasp. Only Eastern Michigan has given points to Serge, and we weren't giving him points last week. So we'll be gaining. He's only 47% luck. There's a chance that we could pick him up. And Michael May, of course, 80 overall guy um we were losing 20 weeks so we should be gaining and we have our visit so we're in the running here both these guys so similar 90 speed and acceleration for surge 89 91 for michael uh 84 throw power 84 accuracy for michael surge has 79 86 so it's like 
right there on who we would want. We definitely want both of them because they can both play multiple positions. Um, but it's just who do we want as our main quarterback? Or maybe we do some sort of weird two quarterback system if we got them both. Or red shirt one one year, red shirt the other the next year. I don't know. There's a lot of options, but we're in a good spot right now, I think, recruiting. So before we play our game, let's check the top 25 polls. What happened last week? Anything crazy? Um, okay, Michigan beats Michigan State in a relatively close one. Stanford beats Oregon. Wait a second. There's what's going on with the rankings. USF is undefeated, um, but number five, and they jumped up from 11. We must have seen a couple of undefeated teams. Yeah. North Carolina, our previous number one, lost to NC State, and that's an NC State team that beat us. So that's very good. And Oklahoma State lost to Kansas. Oh my gosh, one and two both took their first losses. Kansas demolished 31-10 there. They did a great job. So our NC State team that we lost to looking very good on this season. Two losses, but they're in 13th. Uh, Arizona State lost to a current number three Washington as well. So that's another top 10 team. There had to have been another number five Ohio State loss to Maryland. Oh my goodness. That is so much. Number 10 USC lost to Arizona. 16 Florida lost to Georgia. I mean, we should be right on the verge. Ranked 27th. If we win this game, for sure, we make it back into the rankings. Reese is still atop the Heisman board, so that's great news. Um, a little bit worried about this running back from Stanford, but he's not scoring as many touchdowns, it seems. Only 17 rushing touchdowns where Reese has 20, plus all the extra all-purpose yards from returning. I think that's good news. Plus, this guy's 99 overall. He should be doing a lot better. Um, how about our awards? Do we see... Yeah, awards semifinalists at this point. Do we have anybody? Uh, okay, Reese White for the Maxwell. That's fine. I kind of expect one of the quarterbacks to win it. The Walter Camp, he's in second. He's got to be up there. Let's see... Uh, the Bednarik sees Shelton in fifth, so a chance there. And the Nagurski, do we have anybody? No. Nobody for the O'Brien. Uh, wow, okay. Reese up there for the Walker. This is uh, best running back award, so it's just between him and the guy who's in second place in the Heisman right now. We've got nobody up for the Belitnikov. And it looks like, yeah, nobody up for the Mackey. The Outland is the same situation. So is the Remington. So is the Lombardi. Oh, man, we don't have a whole lot. Uh, Shelton uh, is up for best linebacker. Surprisingly low on that list, I would say. Uh, and Jordan Morris up there for the Thorpe, which would be a nice pickup. Unfortunately, our kicker who doesn't kick often is not up for the Groza. Uh, somehow Camden Lewis from Oregon is. And also not for the guy, but the returner of the year. Yep, Reese White all the way up at the top. Uh, second best has almost half the kick return yards and has half the touchdowns. So he's looking really solid to win this award, which would be like our third straight year in a row of winning it. But I think it's time for us to go on the road. I am curious. Uh, we, obviously, Notre Dame is good and uh, Lee Corso is not in our side for this one. How have they lost? Let's see. They beat the bad Louisville team. They lost to a good Georgia Tech, but they got slaughtered. They lost to a mediocre Florida State. They lost in overtime to Clemson, and they lost to USC. But they beat Boston College, a mediocre team. They beat Wait, mediocre Wake Forest, and uh, they, they did a good job against Navy, but it's Navy. So they don't have a very difficult schedule, all things considered. They will come up with NC State and Stanford to end it, but... We have a chance to win here. We just have to play well. They're going to be very high overall, so their players will be good. So if we can execute, we'll be okay. Yeah, 95 overall. Miami was only like 90 or 91, so this should be a lot more difficult. We are on the road. And we're just going to go ahead and wear our standard aways for this uh, game. For Notre Dame, uh, we're just going to scroll through their, uh, their couple of options. I don't think this is updated. Um... And it's not letting us look at them all all of a sudden. But uh, there we go. Uh, we're going to go with the home bowl ones because the home ones don't have the name on the back. And I think that's foolish. So we're going to we're gonna put the name on the back of the helmet and see what we can do against Notre Dame. 95, 95, 93. This is going to be difficult. So offensively, they pass the ball a ton, but they don't run it a lot. Bad news for us because our defense uh, is completely opposite in what they can stop defensively they're just pretty good all around um we're gonna have a hard time moving the football 
Not going to be easy. 99 overall player. I'm going to say thankfully, even though I feel bad for it. Thankfully, their center, who is their second best player, is out injured. And then they drop down to their punter at 92. So they don't have a crazy amount of, uh, like, ridiculously good talent. It's just a lot of very good talent. Um, they have a couple of injuries as well. Oh, so good for us. A right guard, a center, and a cornerback. Um, goodness, maybe that's enough to swing things a little bit in our favor. But this is going to take a lot of work. So it is a full-on whiteout here in South Bend, Indiana, but unfortunately, I can't even be excited. It's a very cool atmosphere, but this is the second time that I've had to load into this game. The first time we were up 21-7 to at the half, and the game froze. Right now, if your grandma isn't subscribed, make sure that you go and subscribe her to this channel for us because we know that she would love the content as the game is just frozen. That is... So freaking brutal. Are you kidding me? So now we get a restart, I guess. We'll try to go tails, and we do win the toss this time. So I guess that's better for us, because now we get to kick off and receive the ball to start the third quarter instead of kicking it off. But I just hope that the defense can continue to play the way that they were previously. We gave up a really easy touchdown before the game froze, but then the next drive they came out and absolutely demolished. So we'll put that uh, one behind us and hope that we can come out and just uh, play some good football. First down, Williams, I'm kind of expecting them to run. No, they go to the air. And over the middle, oh, I just couldn't quite get there in time. If that pass was lower, maybe we get the interception. And unfortunately for us, they're actually going to be uh, running the ball here and they're in the hurry up, which never goes well for us. Hold them to three yards on that, that's fine. On this second and seven, they're going to motion the tight end over. Let's see what they do. It's going to be another pass, and guys are open. Quarterback scrambling. Morris couldn't get the stop. Brandon Clark got five yards. Really going to try to bring the pressure on third and two. They will go to the air, though. That's big trouble. Quarterback scrambling. Oh, he scrambled too quick, and he got the first down. Yeah, I hate to see that. We had a chance to get off the field. But it just didn't quite happen that way as there's a man open. Diggs got there just in time. Perfect timing to break that one up. So this one's a second and 10. We'll expect them to pass as they're in that five wide. And I'm going to bring the pressure with Sidney McRae. And we get to the quarterback as he's throwing and force the third and long. So the nickel 3-3-5 three, three, is what we're going to show just so we can try to defend the pass as much as possible. They're throwing deep, and they burned us two guys over there. Neither one could get the stop, and it's first and goal. That is really, really disappointing. They're going to go to the air on this one as well, and guys couldn't get the stop, but we didn't give up the touchdown yet. Hopefully they don't catch on to what I'm doing here. Actually, never mind. They are still five wide. Why would I be bringing a double safety blitz? Trying to make mistakes, apparently, on my part as we're waiting. And, oh, he just missed his man. It is third and goal here. We're going to sell out to stop the run on this one. 100% third and goal. Engage 8, expecting them to hand it off. And they will. We get the stop and we'll hold them to a field goal. More than happy with that. We gambled and it paid off big. Fourth and goal. They're going to have to kick the field goal. I'm tempted to try to bring a bunch of pressure, but we won't. The kick is good. 3-0, that is more than we could have hoped for from the defense. Now let's just see if the offense can get it done. I wouldn't mind trading field goals, but I want to score the touchdown and take the lead. That would be great news. The blocking, oh my gosh, it looked like it was going to be good. It turned into a hot pile of crap there, and now we're starting inside our own 20. So before the game froze, Reese was moving the ball really well, and Logan Malden was having a career game. Let's just hope that those things stay consistent. We're going to try to keep the ball on the ground as much as we can. This time the counter sees a little bit of room for Reese, and it's got us to a third and short. This might seem foolish. You know, our defense has shown that they can get a stop, but I might go for this if we don't get it on third and two. Reese, yeah, fourth and two. They didn't even say he got a yard. Oh, that's tough. I'm going to make the ballsy call here and try to go for it on fourth down. They're going to bring pressure. We can get outside the pocket, and we can scramble for this. Grayson got the first down, <laughs> ran into a, a receiver, but got enough and held onto the ball, more importantly. So that'll uh, quiet the fans a little bit as the drive stays alive for now, and we can allow Reese to just continue and try to churn out some yards. Try to see what we can do with the play action on second down. 
Feels like there's some pressure. Logan Malden came down with it, got three yards. We'll take that. This is a really big third and four, and I got to be honest, I'm not sure when the last time these, uh, this play really worked for us, but we're going to try the slip screen. Hopefully it works. Reese, oh, it's still short. He kind of had it, but got a little bit weird, and we're going to have to go for it again on fourth and one. I'm calling the QB sneak this time. I think one of the last times we tried it, it didn't work. But hopefully on fourth and one, yeah, Grayson gets enough. And it's not easy for the offense right now, but they are still moving down the field. So we've got a first down to work with. And they're going to bring some pressure outside the pocket. Looks clear. Circle might be open. Bedgood came down with that. That was a tough throw to make. And the concentration from Aaron to find it and hold on is massive. Plays like that are so, so important. They give us those easier first downs. We are well across midfield here, trying to drive down and at least match them with a field goal of our own. We'll try to throw the ball on this second and seven. Looks like they want to bring pressure. It is a safety blitz. That leaves Reese White wide open. He gets the little back juke spin on one guy. Can't get anybody else. The cavalry arrives and takes him down, but he got eight yards and another first down. They're having a terribly difficult time stopping him right now. And plays like that make them think twice about bringing those blitzes. But when they bring pressure like that and get the stop, it certainly won't help. And that's actually going to be the end of the first quarter. So at the end of one, we are losing. But it's only 3-0 and we have the ball driving down the field. It's been a long one. I'm not sure if we're in field goal range yet. But that's all it would take is just one touchdown and we can really open this up. Second and 10. I got to be honest, I'm a little bit weary about uh, trying to run the ball here. We'll do it anyways. Reese actually getting great blocking. Bowled a man over and got eight yards. So it leaves us another third and short. This seems like it could be a decent time for it. We're going to try the read option. Grayson's going to be able to keep it. And unfortunately, he gets hit in the backfield and loses yard. It's fourth and three. The worst part about this is somehow we're not in field goal range yet. So we're going to have to uh, go for this. And I'm hoping that we can scramble again outside the pockets. I'm just throwing one up. DJ Johnson came down with that. How on earth do we still have the ball? And how is it a first and goal? That was a miracle. We have no business completing that pass, but it worked. I didn't feel comfortable trying to pick up the yard on the ground and <laughs> just kind of pressed a button and he managed to come down with it. My goodness, that is... So, so lucky. I uh, was wanting to run the read, but instead we're just going to hand it off to Reese, who's getting some decent blocking, and he's got us up most of the way to the end zone there. So we have really driven down the field on this one as I actually kind of burned a little bit of clock on this play. Trying the halfback slam. Reese will lose yards. It's third and goal now. I'm going to be incredibly stubborn. I'm going to continue to run this man third and goal the blocking isn't looking very good he's only getting back the two yards it's fourth and goal this is a tough decision to make and I'm going to make it from the two yard line the fullback dive I don't feel confident about this at all but maybe we can get a safety or maybe we score the touchdown JJ Barr got into the end zone fantastic push from the freshman fullback and we will take a seven to three lead midway through the second quarter we were out on the field for like seven minutes on that drive if the defense manages to get us another stop, uh, I'm going to be really, really, really confident. Anything to open this up. If, if we can just prevent them from scoring any points, that'll be best case scenario, though. One of the biggest things that we do have to worry about is this running back is good. Quarterback, oh, almost threw a pick. Aaron Diggs jumped the route and got the deflection. Second and 10 now, and I got to say, they're not running it as much as I would expect. Sidney McRae getting some pressure. Steele has the interception. I don't think he's going to have the speed. No, the blocking is there. It's just Charles Steele gets the pick six. The outside linebacker jumped the route. And so much for just getting a stop. The defense did that and more. Scoring points, extending the lead to 11. Oh my goodness. Back-to-back -back games now with a defensive touchdown. That is absolutely incredible. And if we can get another stop, I mean, we might just blow them out at this point. I know you guys are going to try to mention it. So let me just show we haven't changed a dang thing on the sliders. This is all exactly as it was before. And somehow we're just dominating.
Another first down. This time they're going to hand it off. And the running back, I don't know why they don't give it to this guy more. He breaks so many tackles. I will note that I'm expecting this quarterback to take off and scramble a lot on this drive. And Charles Steele, oh, he couldn't follow up one massive play with another. Almost hit him in the backfield there. I'm anticipating a lot of passing on this drive, but they haven't shown it yet. Only two minutes left in the half. Another run out towards the edge, and wow. Shelton was able to bring him down, but he still got seven yards. Gotta say, I can't blame these guys to continue to run because they're moving the ball so effectively. They're going to do it again. Steele again can't bring him down, and he got another first down. Kyron Williams is the man. We're seeing him go absolute beast mode right now. They will finally pass, but we get the sack. Oh, is that Charles Steele up the middle? Steele is an absolute monster right now. That was him that got the sack. It forces a second and 18, and we can expect them for sure now to pass. Apparently, I'm using Hall. That's an accident. Over the middle, they do get the completion, but it's third and seven, and I think they're outside field goal range. A little bit late getting into formation here. They threw the screen, though, and we're able to get the stop. Let's take the timeout. It's fourth and ten. They're certainly not close enough for the field goal. Now the punt formation comes out, and we're going to hope that this one goes into the end zone for a touchback or is shanked, and maybe we can get a decent return. No, that one's landing in the end zone. So a minute and 19 and two of our timeouts to try to go down the field and extend this lead once again. Now, obviously, we're going to need to be passing, but we're going to open up the drive with a read option. Try to trick them maybe into thinking we're not going to run it as much, and Grayson can pick up a first down as well. That's great news. Let's see if we can continue to burn them. They're bringing the safety blitz. We're going to just barely get rid of it as we're throwing. That pressure came all too quick. Second and 10 with a minute and 11 left. We're going to continue to keep passing. Malden gets a good reception there. That puts us near midfield. If we're able to beat these guys, they're going to look really, really bad. First and 10, trying to throw over the middle. Bedgood is there. He's got the catch, and it's another first down across midfield. They're bringing the pressure, but it's not quite getting there fast enough. So we're just driving and driving and driving. Here's the pressure again. And trying to throw a tough one. Bedgood again open again with the catch, this time inside the 25. They just can't seem to stop us. Notre Dame secondary struggling. Under a minute to go here. There's another open man. Bedgood comes down with it. Please give us the first down. They do, which stops the clock again for us. I'm expecting to take a timeout here, so we're going to run a read option. See if we can burn them with it. Yeah, they, they try to focus on the quarterback, so we're able to run for five yards, and I'm going to take our second timeout now with 41 seconds. The way I see it is that allows us to make substitutions if we need to, and otherwise we can uh, just continue to pass here. Second and five outside the pocket. X was maybe open, but why, why throw it when Grayson can run it to the one-yard line? All it would take here is uh, just an easy run up the middle, as I called the wrong audible, but now we'll go with the dive. Reese White has the touchdown. Oh my goodness, 21-3 to with 30 seconds left in the half. So somehow this game is going even better than before it had froze, which is fantastic. And with 30 seconds left and only two timeouts, I feel confident that we won't give up a touchdown here. I am going to try to make sure that they don't pick anything up by just playing pretty uh, preventatively here as there's guys open, but he's going to step out of bounds, only gaining three yards. There's just not enough opportunities open for this quarterback so far. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they ran the ball and just kind of called it quits on the half or they're trying to go for it. Yeah, there's the timeout taken, but it's third and inches. If we manage to get the stop here, we're taking our timeout and uh, just trying to score again. Third and inches. They do throw it. Man's open. And they get the first down. Clock's going to be burning pretty quick, though. Plenty of time with 14 seconds, honestly, for them still to get into field goal range. So we're not out of hot water yet. Over the middle. Oh, my gosh. A man wide open. Baker gets the clutch tackle. Six seconds to go. They're going to go for this? Are they going to try to spike the ball here? I'm not certain. We need this to go well. I really want them to go to the air so long as we don't give up the touchdown, and they will. Looking for the end zone. They have their man wide open. Oh, we can't give that up. 
Well, shoot, a touchdown to end the half. It's going to be 21 to 10. I'm going to take the blame for that. We should have taken the timeout and gone into the cover four to, to prevent against that. Uh, so bad on me. We're only up 11 and we're giving... No, we're getting the ball, aren't we? That's fantastic. Well, you know what? This game's going pretty well. If the offense scores again here, we're going to be really, really sitting pretty. And uh, how about this? For our halftime, um, if you're already subscribed, go talk to your grandma. Get on her YouTube account or make her one and subscribe to this channel for her. We know that your grandma's going to love my content. And if she doesn't, well, then you need to convince her otherwise. Reese back to return to start the half. It will be a fieldable kickoff. And, oh, that was really bad movement from me. We don't, we don't have great field position. What we do have is an offense that has been incredibly clutch so far on the day. And a running back who is leading the way for the Heisman and leading the way downfield for 11 yards. Reese honestly isn't averaging a whole lot per carry, but he's averaging enough. And, oh, Dion Fountain couldn't hold on to that one through the contact. That might have been Grayson's first incompletion. No, only his second. I'm going to continue to pass on this second down. So I think that our passing game has worked pretty well thus far. And trying to stay patient, there's Tyson Mobley. And you know he's going to hold on to that one. Third and one. We're near enough to midfield that so long as this isn't a play where we lose a ton of yards, we'll go for it on fourth. But third and one, handing the ball off up the middle. A big gap for Reese. It closes quickly, but he gets enough. And the chains are going to be moving. There is nothing that these guys can do. First and 10, really struggling to stop Reese. And oh my gosh, he keeps the legs moving. He's having a great game so far. 51 yards isn't a crazy amount, but he's got a big touchdown. Let's see if they're ready to get beat on the play action. Waiting for it. Reese is actually honestly pretty wide open. Can't juke a man out, but got almost enough for another first down. And we might as well try this. Only one of five on third downs. Was that last third down conversion our first of the game? That's honestly a pretty crazy stat line to me. Uh, but we got our second one there. One more thing that's been so impressive to me so far in this game is how much we've controlled the time of possession. All the tempo is uh, in our favor right now. As this defense has got to be starting to get a little bit tired. Tempted to call the audible here. But we're going to run the read option. Grayson's going to be able to keep it. He's got some blocks in front of him, and he'll slide down for another first down. Our running game is impeccable right now. The yards per carry could be a little bit better, but as it stands, we are just consistently moving forward. They are struggling to stop us, and look at that. Another six-yard pickup. We're over 100 yards now as a team. Not only that, but we have uh, burned half of this third quarter away already on this drive. And on the play action, there's an open Logan Malden who got a block. Oh, what a fantastic pancake down there. It gives us a first and goal inside the five. These drives that we're putting together are just soul crushing for the defense. As Reese this time gets his second rushing touchdown of the day on a four yard pickup. We extend the lead again, 28 to 10. This is going so well. We just need the defense to step up like one or more, two more times. And if they could just manage to do that, this game is ours. I want a blowout. You know, we've had games where we win pretty handily, but at the end, the final score doesn't reflect that very much. I want to score like 42 in this one. We just got to keep, you know, our foot on the gas pedal this game. I'm going to be curious to see as we start this quarter how much they utilize the running back who did so much to us early on. And, oh, that's not good news. Durham Finch is the only hope to catch this man. Somehow he's so incredibly quick, but it's not enough. And we just gave up a one play touchdown. Oh, we brought the blitz and it did not work out. The man was open enough and just got free after uh, the diving tackle immediately missed. And then they just nobody could catch him. That's difficult. Durham was honestly looking a little bit like uh, DK Metcalf on that one. Just chasing the guy down. Absolute savage. Uh, it's nice to have a guy that big. It's kind of interesting that he's uh, a defensive end. So that was disappointing. And, you know, I got to be honest, if you're their defense, you're maybe a little bit angry. Uh, they didn't get a whole lot of time to breathe before being forced to come back out here. And hopefully it's going to start to show. Second and one will hit him with the fake little play action that you don't really see all that often. And 
Oh, I didn't get rid of it. I tried to throw the ball away. I pressed the button, but Grayson couldn't get the throw off. So I essentially self-sacked myself there. And we'll lose uh, a lot of yards. It's third and seven. We'll have to go to the air, which is not great news. And we'll find Dion Found, but he can't hold on to the ball. So fourth down and a long ways to go here. And well, so much for the blowout that we wanted. We're going to have to boot this one away. It is into the wind. Hopefully this one gets far enough. Oh, thank goodness. Oh my gosh, what a bounce. Stop ball. Stop, 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 stop. Oh my goodness. The greatest punch you've ever seen. It died at the one yard line and we just absolutely flipped the field with that. So first and 10, we'll try to get the safety. We bounced him into the end zone. He got back out, but still didn't gain any yardage. And we just got to continue to try to bring this pressure and hope that we can get in there and disrupt a play and get the safety or at least force them to punt it away. It is third and eight here. Hopefully not making a terrible decision on third and eight. We're going to try to prepare to stop the, uh, the pass and it works. Defense holds fourth and eight here. We're going to try to block the punt. I don't really expect this to work, but it's worth the shot anyways. Um, you never know. At the very least, we've got him backed up and we flipped the field with that. Unable to block the punt. Reese will be able to field it starting in our field territory. <laughs> if I just go to the edge, we get like 20 yards on the return. Instead, because of the special teams and the defense, the offense gets to come right back out onto the field in our opponent's territory. That was as good of uh, a punt as we could have ever hoped for. And now we can pretty much just get this into the fourth quarter with a two-score lead. We have no reason to let this clock not burn out. Uh, on the rest of the third quarter. So we'll let it go. We'll head into the fourth. We gave up a really disappointing touchdown, but we got a good one of our own. 28-17 uh, touchdown here. It might be too far out of reach for Notre Dame. The clutch skill is activated for Notre Dame as we start this quarter with a second and five. But the clutch skill not doing enough. Reese White just continuing to move the legs. Gets us a third and in inches. And there's no reason for us not to just run Right back at them, up the middle. They haven't stopped it well all game. They're not stopping it now that we're in the fourth quarter. This game seems like it's all Reese's. If they're able to stop them, I'll be very surprised. They're going to have to dial up a massive blitz for that to be the case. It could happen here because they're set up for it, but no. We just cut back up field and we get four yards. They're really just struggling is not bringing a whole lot of pressure. Picking up a block outside the pocket square it was wide open. I saw it, but Grayson's able to get in anyways. A fantastic block again out there from the wide receivers. It's been impeccable all day. And we increase the lead 35-17. That's fantastic. Curious to see if they're looking if he stepped out of bounds here. The play is under review and oh my, I've actually, I don't know if I've ever seen them review something like that. He definitely stepped out of bounds. So I expect this one to come back, but it should be a first and goal inside the five. That's a first for me. I've never seen them review one of those. Well, at least this gives us a chance to continue to burn some clock. And maybe to give Reese White his third rushing touchdown of the game. And he's going to get just that eventually, maybe. No, he was short of the line to gain. That is so surprising to me. That ball has to be millimeters away from the end zone. But we'll try to do it again here. Second and goal there. He gets it on the second attempt. Another rushing touchdown for him. And now we increase it to 35-17. That actually might have been best case scenario for us that Grayson didn't get in because it allowed Reese to score the touchdown. And it was, uh, you know, allowed us to burn a little bit more clock. So we're under four minutes to go in this game and we have a three score lead. I don't know how they come back from this. Definitely going to be expecting a lot of passing on this drive, but their running game is so good. Maybe they don't need to. They're going to open it up with a draw on first down. And that's what I mean. Why pass the ball when you can run it for 12 yards at a time? So by doing that, they're kind of forcing us to uh, up the pressure on this play. And first down, they go to the air. Pressure can't get there. They get nine yards. They could easily burn us on this play. Second and one. Uh-oh, they go to the air. I got burned by the tight end. Diggs is quick, but not quick enough to catch up there. So we give up 18. And I got to say, I'm a little bit crazy, but I'm going to continue to bring the blitz. 
Hall can't get to the quarterback. Reed dropped the pick, and then somebody else dropped the pick, and then Reed dropped it again. We had three chances and couldn't come down with it. I'm not sure we'll get another opportunity that good in this game to, to get another uh, turnover, but can't complain too much as there's a massive sack. I don't know who it was that got in there. Joel Hall did it. It's third and 18. We might hold them to a field goal here. I'm not even sure if a field goal is something they would attempt at this point in the game, but if it's going to happen, it's going to be on this play as I'm expecting them to throw deep. Quarterback gets sacked again. He had all the time in the world, but just ran out of time apparently. I don't know. The blocking should have been there. He should have had somebody open, but we get the sack. It's fourth and 25. And on top of all of this, they're going to go for it. Uh, kind of an interesting decision. I'm using a, a D lineman, apparently. They're going to throw it up, and Morris can't, drops the pick, but honestly, it's for the best. We have great field position with two and a half minutes left to play. We're about to give Notre Dame a losing record on the season. So long as we don't cough up the football, we can just burn this one out and uh, go home with a win. Get out of this snow and improve to 7-3. and three. Reese has gone above 100 yards again today with three more touchdowns, so he just continues to have good games, and I can't see how he gets displaced on that top spot. Notre Dame not taking their timeouts as we get around a minute left. We're going to try the counter, and they stop a short fourth and five, but uh, we'll probably punt this one away. I know I said I wanted to just continue to burn the clock, but... We're going to try and just cough and corner this and let the defense finish the job. 27 seconds left. Stop it, stop it. Oh, too much bounce that time. Not towards the corner enough. They'll get the touchback. So we don't need to do a whole lot at this point to win the game. Just need to get the stop. And yeah, they're running the ball. That should mean enough. Although they are taking their timeouts. 19 seconds left. They just don't have enough time. This is game over. We're inevitably going to give up yards on this drive, but I mean, I, I will give up some yards for a win. Oh, second and inches. They throw the screen. Why would you throw the slip screen in this situation? They take their second time out, but it's third and one. Very questionable decision making on that play. Expecting a run up the middle, if I'm being honest, or maybe out towards the edge, but we'll see. And yeah, there's the handoff. We are not able to stop them, but 10 seconds left. I mean, why are they still running the ball? I'm actually going to take a timeout here, and we're going to bring in the second team defense. There's no reason I shouldn't have been giving these guys the extra reps to start this drive, so we'll just continue to uh, allow these guys to get reps here throughout the season, and, uh, you know, hopefully that allows them to improve a little bit, uh, especially going into next year where we're going to need a lot of them. So four seconds left. We'll expect this to be the final play of the game. I'm curious if they will hand it off or... <laughs> It's going to be one more play, apparently. We brought the pressure up the middle, and they uh, apparently were worried about taking the sack, so quarterback threw it away. One second left. It's third and one, and they're throwing another slip screen, and it's incomplete as well, so they just made their quarterback look even worse on those last two plays, and we complete the, I guess you would call it an upset victory, but a victory nonetheless over Notre Dame. We moved to 7-3, and three, they moved to 4-5, and five. and how about the team as a whole? The whole unit played well. The offense was clutch when we needed them to be, and the defense got plenty of stops and had a pick six. We don't get defensive turnovers that often. We don't get defensive touchdowns even less often, but there it is, Charles Steele grabbing the interception and taking it to the house. 35-17, Chanticleer's looking fantastic in this one. We seem to be the only really impressive game around the country as nothing crazy happened there. How about this? We allowed 245 passing, but again, we held them to 53 rushing yards. We rushed for 152 and passed for 134, won the turnover battle again, and won the time of possession battle again. Look at our second quarter, 21 points in that. I think we had a similar uh, quarter, second quarter against Miami but just able to get it done early in the first half and just able to push and continue to, to perform in the second half. Reese is obviously once again our offensive player of the game. 
29 carries, 107 yards, and three touchdowns. Had a couple of receptions as well, but Charles Steele, what a monster on defense this game. Uh, a sack and a pick six. That is so clutch, and it really is starting to feel like this team is starting to gel. The team chemistry is off the charts right now, and these guys are poised to continue deep into this season. I want a really good bowl game at this point. Let's go ahead and sim through the week, and let's see. We expect to be ranked. Oh, no, we have to play on the road at number six, North Carolina, next week. If we are going to lose any game this season, it's going to be this one. But we'll see if we can get ranked. Our curse, man. We're going to get ranked just to lose it to North Carolina? We don't even get any silver lining heading into this week as guys are starting to commit elsewhere. Jared Robinson goes to Ole Miss. Brian Terry and Anthony Robbins go to Baylor. I mean, I guess the 62 overall strong safety is ready to visit, so that's great. But uh, I was hoping for a commit. Still in battles with a lot of good players. Uh, we need to start locking a few of these guys down. Let's see. A lot of XP. Are we going to be ranked? Number 24. We get it. North Carolina moves up to number four. Eight and one. Oh my gosh, they're an A plus team. I do not see how this is going to go well. Who did they beat to get back up to number four? Or were there, there must have been more losses because that's a lot of uh, shuffle in the rankings. LSU beat number 12, Bama. What was, they must have been up there because they jumped up from 10th to 6th. And yeah, Bama was at 8th. So they take their second loss. USF finally loses. So they, they were up at 5th. And they drop down to 16th as they're no longer undefeated. Number four, Texas lost their third game of the season to Baylor, an unranked Baylor. They got badly beaten there. They drop down to 19th. That's a massive fall. Uh, Oregon joins us as they get back into the rankings. Who dropped out? Kansas and West Virginia. But we're ranked, and uh, the teams around us. Look at the overalls. We're an 83 overall. All of these teams except for USF have been in the 90s. Is it literally just us and USF at 83 overall and everybody else is 90 overall or higher? That is incredible. Very, very difficult. How about the poll that matters at this point in the season? The BCS, that has us also at 24th. So maybe getting ourselves poised to make a run for an at-large bid or at least a, a nice bowl game, especially now that we're in the ACC, we should have a decent one. And our boy Reese better be up top here still. He has continued to perform and he is still getting the love that he needs. The other running back that we're up against, he had a decent game, only one touchdown, but managed to get a win in a bunch of yards, but dropped Sam Howell, this UNC quarterback that we have to face next week. Oh, it's going to be so difficult. He's, he's lights out, having a great season, I'm sure. 201 QBR, which is great in this game. 2,600 passing yards, 31 touchdowns to one interception. The man doesn't miss, throwing at 70%. He has been sacked 17 times, but that is monster. And he's even run for 310 yards as well. So this is, oh, that's not going to be easy. We'll leave all the worrying about that game for next week, though, as we'll just uh, be happy that we're 7-3 and three right now, back in the rankings. And just, uh, I don't know, we have a chance to continue to win. Maybe we could do something uh, this week, but uh, we have one more game after this against Duke. That one should be a win. We're looking for eight wins. If we could get nine, it would be fantastic. That's going to do it for this episode, though. Oh, my gosh. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. That was a blast. Even with the freeze, we, we came back and uh, had a similar performance in the first half, so I don't feel like we got cheated out of anything from the uh, from the other game that we had tried to play. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. And if you did and you're not already subscribed, please feel free to subscribe right now. It's free to do. And uh, at the end of the day, if you stop enjoying my content, you can always unsubscribe later. And again, like I said, Go ahead, get your grandma a YouTube account, subscribe her to this channel. I know your grandma's going to love me. I, I wait, grandma wouldn't. <laughs> and while you're down there doing that, you can show her the description where we've got links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as a link to my Twitter and our community Discord. And always, maybe your grandma wants the college football revamped mod. That's down there in the description as well. But regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.